Hello everybody, this is Adam here from A-Strings and we are at the Vintage Guitar Weekend here at Chapter Arts in Cardiff and I've got the pleasure of being joined with Mr John Etheridge and we are going to talk guitars. So, thank you for some, spending some time with us today and oh, taking pleasure. the time out to interview. Pleasure. pleasure. So, first of all, let's talk about your career. Let's talk about you. So, for those that are living on Mars or in a cave, <laughs> sum up. This is the challenge we've set to everyone as well. Sum up. Sum, sum up your, your career, career in and there's two a clock. lines. There's a clock. A clock. Uh, yeah. Oh my but god. No. Let's oh talk about some, some highlights. Let's talk about well, yeah, where okay. you started and some highlights. Uh, highlights starting. Well, I, I mean, I, I actually, I'm coming up to 50 years in the biz. Um, and my first decent gig, I suppose, was with, with a guy called Daryl Way, who was violinist in Curved Air, and he put a band together. Which was something I was always in, sort of uh, jazz fusiony. That was my kind of thing, and it, it, with the Mar Vision Orchestra in 1972, that became quite fashionable, as it were. And so he put this thing together, which was something like that, and I was mm. in that. And then I got um, from that, I got into the Soft Machine, which was a big deal at the time. That was uh, that was the sort of Europe's number one jazz rock band, if you like, yeah. Soft Machine. And I followed. Uh, in fact, Alan Holdsworth actually recommended me, which was. Uh, oh, wow. Very nice of him, actually, which was, um, you know, so I owe him a drink. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then um, these people you owe a drink to, actually. Mm. And and uh, we were on telly, and um, Diz Disley, the guitarist from Stefan Grappelli's, uh, the jazz violinist uh, outfit, was looking for a, a new guitar player. And uh, we'd happened to be on the telly with a soft machine, and another guy, a guy called Pete Shade, who's a vibe player, said, oh, yeah, I saw this bloke on the telly last night. And of course, that was nothing to do with Stefan Grappelli music, but thank God he said something. And so Diz Disley came to see me. So then I had years with Stefan Grappelli, and that was a yeah. real highlight. You know, played with all sorts of people, and we started off with a sort of three month world tour and all that kind of thing. And also, it was very, very um, after Soft Machine, which was great, and we're still doing, by the way. It's got a new album out, 50 years on. There's a new Soft Machine album out, but um, just coming out in September, actually. Um, but uh, um, th this was, you know, this was, we, we, we went all over, the first thing was Stephen Grappelli, all over the world, it was so exciting, Hong Kong, Australia, and America, Canada, and yeah. Germany, France, Italy, it was brilliant, <coughs> so that was a real highlight, then, then um, sort of in, the, so that, that sort of finished in the early 80s, then the 80s, for like everybody of my, our era, was... Uh, I think Gordon did all right in the 80s, actually, but uh, the 80s for most of us, particularly in this kind of jazzy, fusion-y, rocky world, was pretty grim. Was that, was that because of the introduction of, of everything electronic then? Or? Well, I think, I, I just have to say, for, and I think anybody who's basically um, my era will agree that the 80s, on every level, was really horrible. <laughs> and I hated all the music. It was all horrible. I loathed it, I'm afraid, I'm sorry to say. Although I did do, I was the first guitarist to play with the DX7, which is the quintessential 80s uh, uh, instrument. And I, I was actually, because I was uh, work, um, I was demonstrating Yamaha guitars. Right. And uh, the job was got for me by, by a friend of mine who played Yamaha keyboards. And he said, yeah, come along and play these guitars. And we, there again, we went all around. You know, there was yeah. lots of money around those days. We went all around the world. And <coughs> I was playing this, and he brought along this DX7, which I took no notice of at all, because it was just another synthesizer. And I remember when we, when we did the demo in Frankfurt, I had to fight my way out from the demo room by the thousands of people cramming around this synthesizer, which, of course, was the beginning of the digital era and the beginning of all those 80s bands with DX7s, all of yeah. which I hated. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even like the sound of it, actually, to tell you the truth. But anyway, so we got, we got through the 80s, and then uh, I joined uh, Danny Thompson's band. Danny Thompson, the bass player, folk bass player, Pentangle. And, uh, right. And then in 93, I uh, did uh, Nigel Kennedy for quite a long time. I did a duo with Andy Summers, oh, wow. um, which we did an album, did a, quite a year or two of touring. Mm -hmm. um, and then I hooked up with John Williams, the classical guitar player. Um, I had my own bands going at the same yeah. time as well, which I always... But it's funny about whether you actually like playing with other people. I remember years ago I did a gig in Cardiff with a fusion guitarist called Wayne Krantz, great player. 
And I'd seen him playing with Steely Dan. I went, wow, right. man, you're playing with Steely Dan. That's, that's like the ultimate gig for me. And he said, yeah, yeah, that's great, man. But when you want to do your own thing, I thought, no. No, for me, playing with Steely Dan, that would be enough. I wouldn't want to do my own thing. I wouldn't care about my own thing. Yeah. But I've always done my own thing, partly because you have to. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, it's kind of nice being in charge sometimes. But yeah. I love these associations, like this association I've got with Gordon and Ray. And, yeah. and, and, and I like, you know, I like having... Uh, and so I've had an association with John Williams ever since about 98, 99. And, right. Or in various... Context: We've done duo a lot. At the moment, we're in a trio with a great guitarist called Gary Ryan, um, and the Soft Machine, which is sort of revived around 2004. Mm -hmm. First of all, called the Soft Machine Legacy. I don't know why, but now we've gone <laughs> just call it the Soft Machine. And we've just been in Japan and uh, in Canada, and we're going to America in October, and we've been in Europe in September. It's proper like proper touring, which uh, you know I've done ma mainly. I'd say since the 80s onwards, I've really been unless I'm with somebody on my own in this country you know a bit like um, Gordon's like that as well apparently you know you, you're sort of uh, I've always worked in England and never really yeah. much of an internationalist certainly as a solo as, a, as on my own you know when I go to America I think does anybody no I remember when I was with Andy Summers and I was doing this interview somewhere in Colorado or something so the interview and they turned to me and said so you're a big deal in England, right? <laughs> so I went, oh, yeah, I guess. But I mean, over here, I've done loads, you know. And I yeah. think, I think uh, you talk about Mars. And I don't think you know, have to be on Mars, but uh, <laughs> hopefully people know me in England. And, and it's, it's, it's been good, you know. So that's yeah. a potted his ver quick potted ver That is the history, that's yeah. That's not bad, is it? That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty yeah. pricey, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. Didn't get hung up on any particular... No, no, that's the good thing. So at what point did... Because obviously, from you know, from sort of seventies through the eighties, then at what point did uh, did you sort of find um, a guitar or style of guitar that you really, really were drawn to, or has it always been different until? No, no, I tell you, this 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 kind of guitar, um, you know, which is a sort of semi 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 solid. With uh, I've always uh, been attracted to. You okay. Know. Um, it's because you, you it, it, in a way, it, it sort of reflects what I feel about music. If I, you know, I've done all sorts of music, but what I really like is something that's got um, a bit of clout, but also a bit of wood, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's yeah. between jazz and... Uh, I thought of a good definition the other day of, the th of two kinds of guitar players. So definition of a jazz guitarist is somebody who has a huge guitar and a tiny amp. And then an extreme rock player has a tiny guitar and an enormous amplifier, right? Yeah. So I'm in between. My guitars and my amps are about the same size, yeah. you know. And um, so I just like this kind of area, you know. So it's got a block to about there, I think. But this is the kind of guitar that I've always, uh, um, you know, I've, I've done done other things, uh, other things. I use other guitars all the time. Yeah. But this is essentially my kind of soul of shape, if you like. Yeah. So and this is this is your model, this your signature. Model, yeah. and this is with Fret King. Fret King, yeah. So when did this collaboration start? How long have you had your well? Model? I, th I think it was kind of Gordon introduced me to JHS and 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 they said, oh, we'd like to make you something. And Trevor, Trevor Wilkinson, of course, is a kind of genius behind all this stuff. Yes. Yeah. And they had a, a kind of uh, they've got the Elise model, right? So this is a modification of the Elise right. model, yeah. which is. This. So basically, you know, it's got the great pickups and the very coil thing, which gets you from single coil there to humbucker with gradations, which I think is marvellous. Yeah. But um, I said I want an ebony board. Mm -hmm. I wanted this chunky. Okay. It's 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 nice and chunky there, um, and and the width the, the the most width they'd allow, you know, for for normal people, which is one and three quarters, I think, and. Um, so it's comfortable for my hand because I've got a gigantic hand. <laughs> ah. And uh, it, you know, I can, I can tell you the truth. On a lot of guitars, I can't play a C major chord cleanly. Right. So, so I need that width. <coughs> so many boards I always like. Mm. <coughs> and I wanted a scratch plate as well because I rest my hand when I play. Okay. Which is something you're not meant to do. But all of us who, who do it, sort of, if you look at George Benson, he does the same thing. And so, so people do, you know. You're not, you're not meant, you're meant to be completely clear, but 
So there you go. It's too late to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this tailpiece, this was actually uh, Trevor's design, because I said, I oh, think wow. the strings through the body is a nice thing. Gives you an extra bit of, just an extra bit of sustain and mm -hmm. an angle. And so it looks like this is the tailpiece. Yeah. But actually, it's not. It's a fake tailpiece, nice but it's so, such a nice looking thing. I mean, what, lovely. And the colour is, it's all, it just comes in one colour, which we do like this colour. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so and it's very playable and it's got a lovely low tension on the strings. I mean, I use elevens on this, and uh, <coughs> this isn't actually my one, but my one I've got elevens <coughs> on, and mm -hmm. um, it feels really bouncy and nice, and and it's a lovely sound. These pickups are great. It's a great sound. I, r I really like it. Wilkinson pickups, then? Yeah, it's amazing. Any plans for? Obviously, this is your your one. You said, yeah. but any plans for anything anything different? Any new 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 models, or is it kind uh, of what you found no, the one and it's? No, I, I, I have no, no. I'm I'm not a good planner, you know. People, this came. <laughs> this, well, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I think it's you know, there's, you're a natural improviser, or you're not a natural improviser, and and I, I don't, you know, I've always been in this sort of jazz world without going on about this too much, and where you you tend to sort of turn up and and, and do it. So this came up, and this, he, he said, let's do something. And um, perhaps the only thing I think I'd do is, is I do like to have a, and I have one of yeah. mine, I've actually put something on. But okay. perhaps, uh, perhaps um, this, this is a very short gap here. So standard arms yeah, <coughs> difficult to fit. But so that might be a way forward, you know, putting the, putting the arm on. I do, I do sort of like having, having the arm. I can do without it, but mm. I, I kind of like it there. Uh, uh, especially when I, I um, depending on who I'm playing with, but uh, something like the soft machine, I really need a, some arm action because a lot of that is sounds and noises. And yeah. Which I do like sounds and noises. I like doing that. I just, I, you know. I'm not really a purist in any area, you know. I'm supposedly... Jazz. Well, the thing about me is actually, if we want to talk about me, which I suppose we are, yeah. uh, <laughs> is to the jazz people, I'm a rock bloke, and to the rock okay. people, I'm a jazz bloke. So I'm stuck in yeah. the middle somewhere, yeah. which in some ways is nice because you're not in a, in a category, but in other ways, it confuses people, you know, and, and I would be confused, actually. If I, were, if I was somebody vaguely interested in guitar players and I, I look at somebody like me, I go, well, yeah, cool. he does this soft machine stuff, you know, which is all full on kind mm -hmm. of. You know, and, and then there's kind of Stefan Grappelli, Django Reinhardt stuff that I do. Well, I actually don't play a lot differently. That's the thing. Right. I don't play very differently. It's a different sound because I'm playing acoustic guitar. Mm. So uh, I can understand it's rather confusing, actually. <laughs> you know, the great, what people like, and understandably, if you only go and see somebody play every two or three years, you want them to be the same, don't you? Yeah. Mm. You know, like Alan Holsworth, who I followed in the soft machine. I mean, he's pretty consistently through his career, playing kind of the same way. I mean, he refined it and moved it about a bit, but it's kind of the same way, but I can understand that with me, people go, oh, God, what, what are you doing now? You know, I just, I mean, it's just what, it's kind of what happens. I mean, I was asked to do the second Macaulay thing out of the blue. I would never have considered, I mean, I knew that kind of music, and I loved Django Reinhardt, but yeah. I would never have considered myself in that area. But if somebody asked me to do it, I go, well, I'm not going to go, um, well, I don't know. I go, yeah, come on, give it a go. You yeah. know, let's try it. And it started off pretty weird, but I settled down and, and he got to like me. And, you know, it was great because I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of learnt on the job, which is great. You know, it was lovely. So going forward, obviously, we've got the Soft Machine mm. album, which we're going to massively plug at the end. It's yes, just going to be a big, plug. hard sell. And then hidden details. Hidden detail plugging. out in September. Yeah, 50 years since the first Soft Machine album. That's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, any solo, solo stuff planned? Uh, uh, no, the, the album I did before was with this wonderful singer, uh, Vimala Rowe, and we did a duo album. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm at the moment in the throes because it turns out the Soft Machine album is coming out on my label. Oh, it's, oh my <laughs> label. <laughs> Uh, due to all sorts of weird things, I, I, I yeah. mean, I have actually got a label. I mean, all it is is what I used to put my solo albums out on. <laughs> and the software machine's coming, so I've got a lot of logistic work to yeah, do I with bet. this I bet. over the next few months. So I'm not thinking, but I do want to do something 
I mean, I've been saying this for years, but I do want to do, I haven't actually got out the solo, I've got solo, solo albums. I've got look, duo albums, I've got albums playing the Django Ryan, well, it's not like Django Ryan, but that, that area, playing yeah. in that area. Yeah. What I haven't got is, um, and I really last two or three years, I've been, is a kind of fusion. I mean, the Soft Machine albums are like that, but of me. Mm. So that's really what I, I would like to do. And then yeah. in uh, 2020 will be my 50th anniversary in the biz. So yeah. I, I'd like to get maybe something out for that. A new album and perhaps a compilation of, of uh, you know, best of, plus some live, got lots of live stuff. That's yeah. Got some great live stuff with Grappelli, you know, which yeah. would be nice to put on. So, so recording-wise, that would be it. I mean, I do want to do a, a full-on... Uh, electric guitar album yeah you know and um, but the soft machine thing practically covers that but but you know yeah it is it'd be nice to do that before before it's all over <laughs> <laughs> well i know that uh speaking of over i know that you uh want to have some time and chill out for the rest of the afternoon yep, yep. so i'm gonna let you go it's been an Thank absolute pleasure nice honestly talking. a yeah. joy seriously yeah, yeah. Um, this has been adam and john for the Vintage Guitar Weekend, and we will see you very, very soon. Yep. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, dude.